site parking lot design will show the user how to complete a parking lot using Bentley Civil Open Roads technology. This is part one of a three-part series, approximately 12 minutes in length. Us today. So today we have a great core set of tools in Open Roads that have yet to be refined. However, we're going to see how this set of tools we can efficiently model a parking lot. So with that, uh, we're going to look at our design and our design that we're working with would be laid out in much the same way any other design would be laid out. Now, a site designer would first go about um, taking into account all the constraints on the site, the boundaries, the right-of-ways, and so forth, the ordinance requirements in particular to generate their layout. This layout can be achieved with either microstation drawing tools or horizontal geometry or even a combination. In this case, I've opted for horizontal geometry. You see the perimeter of my site laid out with the various parametric constraints. So for instance, you know, if I needed to change a dimension along the perimeter, um, I would see the site, in fact, update to reflect that change. So we can always use undo uh, for the in-place editing and change the modifications as needed. Some other places I can change are, for instance, between the islands, you know, if I were to um, change the width of the space in between the parking islands. Uh, now, because we're working with geometry, even though we per se don't have it stored in Kogo, um, we still are working with geometry. So if we were to come in and make a gross change to our site, um, we may get something like this. And this basically is telling me that, hey, look, if we go above 67 feet, um, we break the geometric rule that is our PI in this case, and uh, we can't do it. So either we need to back off that dimension or do an edit undo and, you know, maybe go back and try uh, a value that's um, closer to what we need or what we can use. In the case of the red lines, we would simply have to delete and readjust, you know, just like uh, any other major change. Okay, so with our horizontal in place, we now begin the vertical process. So for the vertical, we create a construction element or a construction surface using construction elements and then we drape our parking lot on top. So I've gone out and I've actually drawn these elements in here in purple. And I'm gonna just start with my center line and go up here and look at my site and I would maybe make some engineering decisions. Um, come in here and in this case, I'm gonna use the line between point command and I'm just going to create a profile across the center of my site and whether or not this is realistic it really has no effect in this situation uh, because your constraints will be different than mine so now I want to put a profile curve between a couple elements and if you've never worked with open roads technology this is very straightforward very interactive process um, you can key in as much information as you want with precision, you could use tools like Civil AccuDraw to tie precision between both plan and profile view. As you see the tracking move through, we could activate Civil AccuDraw and we'll do that another day. But for today, uh, we have our profile, so we'll complex it together. We can give it a name if we want, and we'll just select and accept. And then, of course, we want to make that active so we could have as many of these profiles as we want and here over in our 3d view we see that active profile now for the sake of using uh, some of the tools to show or demonstrate their capabilities i'm going to move through these rather quickly and what i want to do next is use this 
profile um, uh, vertical offset tool and I want to use a uh, slope style called linear if I use my arrow keys I can move through this tool set and with that I want to select an element say this outermost element select the reference element which would be the one that I just profiled then I'm going to lock to the start and lock to the end for the range uh, at the starting offset I want to set a um, positive 2% slope and at the ending offset I have set a negative 2% slope and once I profile this element uh, I can make that profile active and I'll see it in my 3D view. Now for um, the intermediate element, maybe the crown in the driveway so to speak, I want to use the same tool set and I'll say linear, I'll select it, uh, locate my reference element, lock to start, lock to end, and now at the start, the vertical start, um, if I was at uh, 2% positive, maybe um, I'm going to set this at um, 0.5 or point, point 0.5% and the end I'm going to set it at negative 0.5 and we'll just see where this goes. Uh, any of these values can be changed at any given time and so again we'll look at that in profile view to set it active. Um, there we can see the type surface profile and here we see the type projected slope. So we're going to set that as active and now we see our intermediate profile. Now as I said before all sites have constraints. It could be ADA, they could be an accessible path, it could be boundary, slope, etc. Uh, and of course there's always balance of cut and fill so volumes are essential in site design. So we're going to uh, select this element, and this element's been placed to represent maybe a point of drop-off. So um, in this area, we want to set up a profile that's going to be very close to the building entrance, maybe for ADA requirements and what have you. And so we'll select that, and we'll just round that percentage off to 1.5. So that's certainly within the realm of compliance at a percent and a half. Maybe if it need be shallower, we'll move it later. So uh, with that, we're going to look at the adjoining element. And you see I've snapped those. And what that snap means is that if I were to come in here and make a move here, you see my element just moves right with it. Okay, so that is a, a, a ruled element, the snap. And I want to profile that and what I've done is I've projected and let me uh, get rid of this so that we can show how that's done uh, I've projected the slope or this element onto the one that I'm profiling now and the way I've gone about doing that is to come up here into uh, project profile to element and I guess I don't have that active make sure that is active okay so again what I've done is I've profiled this element and I'm going to project this element onto the element I'm profiling and why would I want to do that well the reason for doing something like this is because when I come in here and maybe the remainder of this parking lot I need to slope and um, let's just do a constant slope off the center line at um, 1.5 percent okay so now my my slope element is up here and so what I need to do is create some sort of transition in between the two. So I have a nice smooth transition there. And um, so maybe what I want to do is use a line between points. And 
I'm just going to run this guy past. And I want to show how we can use plain old microstation trim command. And join those up. Now if I want, I could have put a curve in there. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as the trim command. And I want to go back to this other element real quick open up maybe another view Let's see where view four takes us data point okay so what we're looking at is the top view seven is the northern element um, view four is the one that's highlighted here and if you recall we go into the properties this had a one and a half percent slope um, along it so right here we have a one and a half percent slope and i said before if we need to change it it's no big deal we can change it at any point so let's just change that to 1.25 and in fact it moved now we didn't see much of a movement here because that was the origin so um let's just see Let's move it up. We'll hold 1.25, but we'll move it up. So we see how that updates because of a, a ruled snap. So you see over here, we have a snap onto the projected element, which is this element. So as this element moves, our slope updates. Now with that, we can easily make a complex and the, the rule will remain intact. And we're going to set this active. In part two of parking lot design, we will create the surface of the parking lot and construction surface, along with the curb and gutter sidewalk surfaces.